But I'd like to talk about castor oil now. So there's been a lot of questions in the break about castor oil and I didn't explain castor oil because I wanted to pour it. You can see it's soaked in now. Now, I don't know whether you had a look at what it looked like when I first put it on, but it is spread right out. But it was like a thick bubble. Castor oil is so thick. So if you had um, an area, let's say bone spur. Castor oil break up a bone spur. Isn't that good news? Say you had a bone spur on your wrist and you rubbed castor oil in. Well, it's so sticky. Now, if you've got time, and I don't know many people who have this much time, if you have time that for 10 minutes you just massage it, it will go in. So it'll eventually go in. But all that will go in is what you massaged in. But if you put a compress on it, you can get about 10 times more castor oil in than if you just massaged it on. Uh, can you see the castor oil on my wrist? <laughs> now I've got castor oil on. <laughs> so we put the, the uh, ginger on in the afternoon for a couple of hours and Jamie might say, oh, it's really hot. So we take it off. And then Jamie has her shower, maybe 8, 8.30, getting ready for bed because she really wants to be in bed by 9. <laughs> so I'm actually not going to put this on her wrist, otherwise her wrist will look like mine with castor oil all over it. And so then we put that on and we bandage that overnight. And remember when you bandage, bandage up between the hands so that it doesn't fall down. That'll, that thumb will anchor it there and that can be overnight. In the morning, what Jamie does is she takes it off, folds it over because she's going to use this again and again and again. That's why we call this a compress. In fact, I've used castor oil sometimes on old injuries and I've used them for a month, the same compress. Now, you see how when I put that on, there's a lot of oil there. You can sit down now, thank you. After about three or four times of being on Jamie's wrist overnight, it's getting a little dry. So then you just put another little bit in. And you might do that every three or four days. So we had a lady, I'm trying to find this lady, because she just showed me how she had a bone spur. No, it's not a bone spur, it was a, um, cor a corn. Yeah. Bunion. Bunion. And so, um, you, tell me your name again. Doreen. Doreen. You can go and have a look at Doreen when, the, when we're finished. <laughs> And she, she put it on her bunion and it's gone right down. And I said to Doreen, how long did that take? Six months? And she said, no, maybe a couple of, month and a half. So that's incredible. So if we understand that castor oil penetrates deeper than any other oil, and wherever it penetrates, it it breaks up lumps, bumps, adhesions, unnatural formations. And a bone spur is an unnatural formation. Cancer. Okay, the next question is cancer. So if it can break up a bunion, if it can break up a bone spur, <coughs> oh, tumor's easy. And when we talked about cancer, I told you about the lady who was told she had breast cancer and she applied castor oil compress and she conquered her breast cancer. And what a lot of ladies do, if it's a lump on the breast, they'll buy an organic cotton panty liner. Now the panty liner is very absorbent and has a plastic backing. And this might be a bit thick to put into your bra. You might look a bit lopsided. <laughs> but the panty liner is thin, so that can be very convenient <clears throat> to just slip into the bra. And again, you can use it again and again and again and again until it starts to look a bit sad and then you might uh, throw it away and make another one. So I'll leave it up to you, you know, if it's in an area where you're not perspiring a lot, um, where, where it might be getting soiled, you might want to change that a little bit more. Yeah? Rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis. Now, this lady asked me a question about a surgery she had done and it has healed and the ginger poultice if there's inflammation 
And if you want to know if there's inflammation, you'll know because the skin will get hot. And if the skin doesn't get hot, it could be that there's a bit of scar tissue build up. That could be the cause. Or sometimes if there's an injury that's been there a while, bone spurs can grow. And that's where the castor oil can work. And I've had two major injuries to my shoulders. So I've become an expert at bandaging shoulders. And what I found when you bandage your shoulder, you see, you just put it around here, it'll just fall off. So what, what I did was I'd, I'd bandage it, bring it up here and then put it under my other arm and bring it up and that, that would hold it in place. But, the, but old scar tissue, um, bone spurs, tumours, excellent for breaking, for breaking that up. The key is consistency. This won't happen once, it won't happen twice, it has to be again and again and again. And castor oil compresses on the abdomen will break up fibroids in the uterus, it'll break up cysts in the ovaries. So if someone has fibroid, number one is to balance the hormones, number two is to wear the castor oil compress. So I saw a lady in Wales last year and she came up to me and she said I've I've seen your lecture on, on hormones, I'm balancing my hormones, I'm wearing the castor oil compress, but at six months on the fibroids, they're no different. And I said, how often do you wear the compress? Oh, once a week. <laughs> they won't do it. You've got to do it every day, every day, every day, every day. You don't have to wear it 24-7, but if you're wearing it on the abdominal area, why would you wear it on the abdominal area? You would wear it for fibroids, you would wear it for polycystic ovarian syndrome, you would wear it for cysts on the ovaries, you would wear it for constipation, you would wear it for irritable bowel. The, the castor oil is a herb and it works with the needs of the body. So if you were wearing it on your abdomen, you would wear it for at least five hours a day, five days a week. So you can have a couple of days break. But the key is to wear it regularly. There are a few contributing factors to breast cancer. And one is that uh, the hormonal imbalance, absolutely. But another is bras. One of the worst bras is the underwire bras because breast tissue is predominantly lymphatic tissue. And the breast tissue is designed to empty into the nodes under the arms. And you've got this wire there that just, just blocks it. So have a look too at sports bras. Have a look at ones that fit well. I think it's a good idea for a lady to spend time in a shop trying lots on with natural fibre. But the castor oil compress can break up uh, calcified deposits in the breast. It can break up... Um, tumours in the breast, it can also help if there's blockages, if a lady's breastfeeding. Swollen lymph nodes, um, your lymphatic system needs to be stimulated by rebounding, but what you can do with swollen lymph nodes is massage, and I think with swollen lymph, lymph nodes, I would spend a portion of time actually massaging the oil in the castor oil. The castor oil can help to disperse that. When the lymph nodes are swollen, it's an indication the lymphatic system is overloaded. That's why the rebounding helps to disperse that <laughs> lymphatic fluid. You can also put castor oil in the eye. Why would you put it in the eye? You could put it in the eye to help break up cataracts. You could put it in the eye to ease glaucoma. So there's a few things you can do. You can get a dropper and drop it in the eye, or if that's too difficult because it's so sticky, you put a drop of castor oil on your finger and wipe it over your eyelid. And I know in Jamaica they use the castor oil a lot on their hair. They've got very, very wavy hair. So when I was in Jamaica a few years ago, they said, what can we give you? I said, castor oil. They gave me two, two, two one-quart bottles of castor oil. I found room in my bag. <laughs> because their castor oil is dark brown. And you'll notice that this castor oil is dark brown. What is the best castor oil? Oh, it's called black castor oil. That is the best, but it's not always available. At our retreat, we use the clear because it's the most freely available. And they both work. Apparently, the dark castor oil is a little stronger because they lightly roast the castor oil bean. 
But if the clear one is all you can get, use the clear because...